the Olympians. They're called the, the Olympians because they have thrones on Mount Olympus. Mount Olympus is a very tall mountain on Greece, and um, in polytheistic societies where there are mountains, the gods tend to live on top of mountains. And so it's like the Greeks looked around, where's the big mountain? There's a big mountain, Mount Olympus. Okay, that's where the that's where the gods are going to live. And the gods live on top of Mount Olympus. It's way up high. Um, do you remember that cake plate picture? Uh, I put up, I put up for you. Um, I'm seeing a lot of black faces. There is that horrible, humiliating video you need to torture yourself with for 39 incredibly grating minutes. But there's the idea of a cake plate. You know what I mean? There's the plate part that sits on the bottom, then the stem that comes up, and then the plate where the cake sits, and then the glass dome to keep the flies off the cake. And this is the heavens, and then there's the flat, round disk of Earth, and then the underworld underneath. Uh, Olympus is so tall that if you dropped, uh, uh, if you dropped something uh, off the top of Mount Olympus, it would take nine days for it to fall all the way to the bottom of the underworld. We'll get to one god who's thrown off Mount Olympus, and it takes him a whole day before it hits the ground. How about that? Talk about a skydiving adventure. I don't want to skydive now. When I was a kid, I really wanted to skydive. And I was like, man, that's great. That's going to be awesome. And me and my friends, Brick Van Manning and John Edwards and Eric Falkenberry and Dennis Kimball and John Axley, we got our money together. We were going to go, we were juniors in high school. And we were going to go, go find out how we can go skydiving. And it was like going to cost us a lot of money. We were like, oh, man, this is going to be so cool. It was like, what do you got to do? Oh, you got to go here. You got to take this train and do all this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, that's going to be so cool. How long are we going to be in the air? 25 seconds. Seems like a... Okay, I'll, I'll just save that little fantasy for in case the plane I'm in starts to crash. <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll do it. But you know, all of that for 25 seconds. I... We very quickly lost interest in other words. But a day long free fall, now that would be cool. That would be cool. It wasn't cool for the guy who got thrown off because he hurt his legs and could never walk again. But anyway, the 12 Olympians, you'll see why I give you a question mark there for the 12 Olympians. Um, 12s. Humans kind of like 12s. Um, 12 and a dozen, right? We find 12s all over the place. Um, 12 disciples, there are 12 apostles, 12 tribes of Israel, um, uh, and the 12 Olympian gods. Um, I only found this out recently uh, when I was doing some work in medieval Europe. That 12 was popular because that's as high as you can count on one hand while you do something with the other hand. And I had that look too when I first thought about it. Um, it's the, if you use your thumbs, just your knuckles, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And as you're counting things out with your left hand, I can't really do it because I'm not used to it, but if you're used to doing it, you can just go da, 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 and you know, oh, I need three more. Keep track like that. I don't know if that's why people all over the world like twelves, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. The twelve Olympians. I posted a list on Canvas for you of the 12 Olympians. And it looks like this. Now, don't, don't copy this down. I put it up on canvas for you, okay? Don't sit there and start getting... My, whatever that tar carpal tunnel syndrome, trying to copy that over. It's all a doc Word document you can print it out and, and have it there. Um, some of you have already knew. Some of you have already counted. There's 13 names on the list. It's because there are 13 Olympians in the 12 Olympians. We'll talk about why that's the case later. It's just different people came up with different lists at different times and different purposes and all kinds of stuff. Don't worry about so much these 13 gods. Yes, I want you to learn everything on this list. In the first column, you have the Greek names. The second column, you have the Roman names. The third column, you have the responsibilities of the I just need to time to scan down there. And the fourth column, I only give you one symbol for each of the gods. Some of them have, all of them have much more responsibilities than I'm giving you, but just one symbol for you to learn. Here's my... Why doesn't Apollo and Hestia have symbols? Because I figured I'd be nice to you. Yeah. I, 
couldn't be meaner. Decided to be nice. Um, we'll be coming back to this list here once in a while. But uh, the way I see it, if you take a college level course in Greek mythology, you should know what the names of the 13 Olympians are. You should know what their Roman names are. You should know what they do. And you should recognize their symbols when you see them in a painting or on a vase or something like that. Why don't you? I'm sorry? Why don't you? Yeah, Hades lives in the underworld. He doesn't live on Mount Olympus. We'll catch up with him. Um, so you have the, the Greek name there, the Roman name, the responsibility, the symbol. I had a, uh, uh, a um, in my humanities class, the first day of class, I kind of got on the soapbox about how recently I've had a lot of students, recently graduated from high school, come to me before the first exam and say they don't know where the answers are. I didn't give them the answers. It took me a while to figure out what was going on, and then I wasn't very happy when I found out what was going on. Well, here I am, big hypocrite me, these are the answers. If you know this chart, you'll know it. Off, not everything, not everything, but an awful lot of questions on the first exam. And you see how some of these questions, and you imagine what some of these questions might be. What's the Roman name of Demeter? What is the symbol for Aries. Are you with me? Yeah, I can't state it any more clearly. Now, this isn't everything, but I do expect you to know this. And because, because learning is supposed to last for a long time, once you've learned this, then it's fair game for the rest of the semester. This is not the last minute of the last minute before the exam <laughs> kind of thing. Not like that. Because then you never learn it. I got through a year of German reading course in graduate school doing that. Go into class and just kind of... Then the night before the test, go home. Oh, learn German. Come to class. Go for it. Come to class. Take the exam. Go home. Come back to class. Like for the exam, go home. Learn <laughs> German. I don't know any German at all because I didn't learn it. Okay. How do you learn something? I won't do what I did in humanities class today because that blew apart. How do you learn something by going over and over it? That's how you learn something. That's how you learn something. Don't tell me you don't like to do it because you've all, you've learned know all kinds of stuff. I think. Why? Because you keep going over and 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 over. Okay. If you can name all the Kardashian sisters, you can name all the Olympian gods. But don't tell me you don't like learning. It's okay. I've done it plenty of times myself. Um, okay, enough said about this. And I'll try to drill you as we go through, you'll get kind of used to it. <coughs> We'll start off with Zeus and Hera. Zeus and Hera make up the third Hieros Gamos, that's Greek for the sacred marriage. I think that's on that horribly humiliating video I posted. I think so. I think that's when we talked about it. Anyway, um, the third sacred marriage. The first one is Uranus and Gaia. The second one is Cronus and Rhea. And now Zeus and Hera. Zeus. The Romans called him Jupiter. I'll sort of explain that to you. I think I did already. I'll explain it to you in just a minute. He's the god of the sky, lightning, and justice. There you see a statue of Zeus. He's holding a lightning bolt in his hand. It's supposed to be a lightning bolt anyway. In his hand. The best theory, and I think it's a very good one, about how uh, the Greek gods got to the Roman gods is that Rome is a, is a very young civilization. I mean, of course, the Roman DNA is as old as everybody else's, but it's a very young culture, very young civilization. And um, all they have are a bunch of animistic gods. You remember, by, you know by now that animistic gods are kind of boring and dull, 
They don't do anything. The clock just sits on the wall. Until we get to anthropomorphic gods like Clockzilla who do all kinds of exciting things, the clock is just clock. It's just kind of boring. And so the best guess here, and why the Romans and Greeks have different gods, have di many of them have different names, some of them have the same name, is that uh, the Romans had an animistic sky god they called Jove. And then they found out about Zeus, who has all these cool stories about him, and so they just kind of asked Zeus to come over and, and fill in for Jove. And so they adopted the stories about Zeus, they put Jove's name to them, and, um, and Zeus just kind of slides over and becomes one of the Roman gods. The Romans also called him Jupiter, I think I explained this to you in more detail at some point, but um, someone speaking Greek, I'm sorry, someone speaking Latin who tried to pronounce the, the Greek name Zeus would say Zhu. They would soften the Z sound and drop off the S sound, so they would say Zhu. Pitter is related to the Latin word for father, and so Jupiter is a way of saying father Zeus. So Jupiter is actually acknowledging, I mean, the name Jupiter is acknowledging that Zeus is in fact the god they're talking about. But they also call him Jove because um, they're used to referring to the sky god as, uh, as Jove. We're going to learn an awful lot about Zeus. We're going to move right off to Hera, actually his second wife. The Romans called him, I'm sorry, the Romans called her Juno for much the same reason. They had an animistic sky goddess named Juno. And so they borrowed the stories about Hera and stuck, um, stuck them into the story. Sometimes the Greeks also called Hera Urania, meaning the daughter of Uranus, whom the Romans called Saturn. And so as you see, the Romans just called her Saturnia, the daughter of Saturn, whom the Greeks called Uranus. You see that goal? there. So occasionally you'll be seeing this, the name Saturnia, but, but you'll know who, who it's talking about. Um, Hera rides around in a chariot pulled by peacocks. Peacocks are associated with Hera. Hera likes peacocks. That's how Hera and Zeus um, finally hook up with each other. Um, Mercury? No, it's not Mercury. I know why you're saying that. No, it's not. No. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite, quite sure. It, um, because I, th I thought that was at first too, but it's no wings at the top. I'm not sure. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you so very, very much. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Um, Although Zeus is already married to another wife, he's attracted to Hera. This is not going to become a strange story to you. Um, and, uh, but Hera wants nothing to do with Zeus. But Zeus knows that, um, that uh, Hera likes peacocks. So he turns himself into a peacock and he kind of you know, goes like this with his wing and his legs. Like, oh, I'm, I'm hurting so bad. I'm a hurting little peacock over here. And I'm just hurting so bad. And Eric goes, oh, no, oh, no, no. And she picks up the peacock and goes, oh, peacock, poor little peacock, poor little peacock. And then, then Zeus turns into Zeus. And, smooth. Smooth move. <laughs> Do you think that's a smooth move? I'll turn myself into one. You need help. <laughs> you need help. <laughs> Um, well, on Wednesday, I'll be I'll be going on the same line of thought. It, I know that if you if you didn't register for the honors course, it's not it doesn't show up on your schedule. But we do meet here. I've said plenty of times you're welcome to come. A few people who are, who aren't in their honors course have been showing up and having conversation, having a good time. We'll be doing the same thing on on Wednesday. So if, if you want to come the same time on Wednesday, you'd rather have the face to face conversation, the same thing we're doing here. We'll be doing it Wednesday, the same time, same room. If you want to come, you're more than welcome. I encourage you to. If you can't make it, I understand that. I'll be videoing it just like I'm videoing this one and putting it up. Hopefully the sound quality is better. Hoping and praying the sound quality is better. I'll tell you this, it 
can't be much worse. Can't be much worse. So uh, stay safe, and I'll see you the next time that I see you.